you now if you ask your dad to get some in. So leave your mummy's loving arms, there's no way you can win. You're victim of your vocal charm, so get some in. The rap's got two years of your life, now isn't that a sin? There's only one way to get out, and that's to get some in. Breakfast, don't I? Hey, just a minute. There's someone's finger in there. Oh, my <laughs> God. How many times have I told you, Escoffier? Tie your finger stall on securely. <laughs> <laughs> you are kidding. Uh, no, I think I'll leave the porridge this morning. Thank you. It's not the egg, right? And it's not the bacon. No way. It must be the liver. liver. <laughs> <laughs> Oi! <laughs> Come on, I'm not a budgie, am I? You again, is it? Well, look at it, Corporal. Looks as if someone's dropped a button onto my plate. <laughs> if you want to complain, Herman, you complain to the the officer. Yeah, I might do that. Yeah, you do that. And just remember that the last hurt that complained was never seen again. We exported him to the walks in Bahrain. <laughs> In tins! <laughs> um, I'll have the right-angled triangle, please. Yeah. <laughs> Dear, my yolk's runny. Good lucky, I haven't even got a yolk. <laughs> oh, what do they put in the tea here? Bromide. What's bromide, Bruce? She's got me feeling randy. <laughs> What's randy, Bruce? <laughs> Nothing that concerns you. <laughs> Then. Oh, wasn't it bad this morning? They must have put something extra in it. <laughs> For what I am about to receive, I am truly ungrateful. That's blasphemy. Well, it's true, though, isn't it? I mean, I've seen more advertising things come out of the S bend of our sink. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you this. What's coming? Tell me a time, please, sir. <laughs> no. Any complaints? Good. Any complaints? Any complaints? Right. Carry on. Well, I nearly complained, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, just as well. Must be easier ways I went in a VC. Oh, you're not wrong, Bruce. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have looked away. I can't find my liver now. <laughs> Yeah, look at this. It says they're starting commercial television in September. Oh, yeah. How will it be different? Well, they'll interrupt the programmes with a load of adverts. People will never stand for that. Uh, I agree. I don't know what the BBC's coming to. Come in. Morning, Percy. Good morning, Lionel. Good morning, Lolly. <laughs> How about that, Lolly? <laughs> Lovely, Lionel. <laughs> you know, Lionel, I reckon you ought to be Minister of Food. How you can afford to overfeed all them greedy irks and still save your best cuts for your regular customers, I do not know. Yeah, well, once you work down part lane, boy, and you never forget it. <laughs> now then, Lolly, can I put you down for a nice leg of lamb? I have a feeling that a carcass will shortly be falling off one of my hooks. Oh, lovely. No. <laughs> and did you see you were clear to a chicken for Sunday? Uh, no, that's a bit difficult. I'm down to 23 birds between 200 ermine as it is. But line, no. Alice, they've got a lot on their plates. Cooks have. Uh, chefs. Uh, pardon, chefs. <laughs> Lionel may have promised his last chicken to Mary Wanstead, but just because we're inviting him to a party and she isn't doesn't give us priority. I could call it 22 birds between 200. 
Yeah, that's it, that's it. I'll make the numbers up with a bit of crawl shooting. <laughs> now, that is a catering brain for you, Alice. Well, I must say, Lionel does us proud. <sighs> Hang on a minute. <laughs> for last week's meat. You got time for a bite? I'd love to, Lally, but I've got a dash. I'm doing birth boogie young for luncheon. <laughs> I haven't dipped the scrag ends in my gravy yet. <laughs> More to being a chef than meets the eye, eh, Lionel? Yeah, <laughs> if you didn't know what you were doing down Park Lane, they'd soon find you out. <laughs> Percy, ask Lionel about your dinner. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry to be obstreperous, Lionel, but do you think that you could give me a bite to eat lunchtime? Only you see Alice is going to the barbers. Hairdressers. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that'd be all right. I've got a couple of pound of fillet steak put aside. Oh, thanks very much, Lionel. No, 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 don't thank me. <laughs> I don't do things for people to be beholden to me. <laughs> By the way, have you got a few herbs I could use? <laughs> Clean job or dirty job? It's filthy. I know just the four. <laughs> what? I said, I don't know why we can't chuck this old porridge out in the dustbins. It's only going to be thrown away, isn't it? Oh, don't you believe it. I should turn up for breakfast again tomorrow. <laughs> I wondered why the porridge got stodgier and stodgier as the week wore on. Yeah. Look, with somebody mean grabbing my belt, I can't reach the bottom. <laughs> 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 I said, this is a terrible way to treat Scotland's national breakfast. Right. <laughs> hey, look out. Here comes Philip Harbin. Dunlop! Are you, by any chance, keeping rabbits on the side? No, Corporal Jenner. Well, what are you discarding all them outer leaves for, then? Oh, there's a lot of slugs in them, Corporal. So what? Well, we can't give them slugs to eat, can we? <laughs> of course we can't. Now they can we waste precious time by picking out individual slugs. See, you simply chop the cabbage up like that, chuck it in the water, and bring it to the boil. This causes the dead slugs to rise to the top. Then you take your straining spoon and cream them <laughs> off the surface. Oh, that's clever, that is. Of course it is. <laughs> you learn a few wrinkles down Park Lane. <laughs> Giving you any trouble, Arnold? A bit slow. Then move yourselves, come on! Ladle two, three, scoop two, three, ladle two, three, scoop two, three! <laughs> Our table is prepared. Oh, delightful, Lionel. It's simple fare, I'm afraid. At such short notice, I didn't have time to create anything classic. It's just <laughs> fillet steak, Duchess potatoes, asparagus tips, and creamed leeks. <laughs> How many times have I told you, Short House? You serve from the left. From the left! Yes, Corporal. Oh, oh, Lionel. Lionel, may I say Park Lane to you? <laughs> if you must. <laughs> Park Lane, Lionel. <laughs> you didn't have to say that. <laughs> I hope it poisons them. We're the ones who's getting poisoned. I mean, look at that, Roy. That proves they can cook decent food if they want to. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oi, this is two higher beings having their dinner, not a Punch and Judy show. Come on, get your fingers out, move! Ladle two, three, scoop two, three, ladle two, three, scoop two, three, ladle two... What I'm saying is we know the form up the cookhouse now, don't we? I mean, we've seen it with our own eyes. Right. They eat like kings up there. And what do we get? Boiled slugs. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll never eat the custard in here again. 
not know. I know it's ma made in the same container with the remains of the gravy. Yeah. <laughs> Did you cop our meat? That was never beef. I reckon that Jenna's offloading a job lot of Argentinian dogs on us. <laughs> yeah, have I got any more porridge in my hair? No, you're all right. I wonder what effect this will have on my dandruff. <laughs> Listen, there's only one thing to do, isn't there? The next time the officer says any complaints, then someone's simply got to stand up and say yes. Dangerous. Well, I don't care. It's got to be said. Well, I hope you get away with it. Mm. <laughs> oh, no. No, no, no. I didn't say I was going to do it. No. You're more the outspoken type, Jakey. Get off. Now, personally, I think Matthew is the one. After all, he's got Jesus on his side, isn't he? <laughs> Oh, I couldn't possibly expect him to intervene in a cookhouse dispute. It's too secular. Yeah. Bruce? Oh, no. It's all right being a martyr, but they always get killed, not me. All right, listen. We'll toss for it, all right? Um, Ed, you do it. Tails, I don't. All right? Tails, I don't. Next. <laughs> hey, just a minute. Yeah. Look, I haven't just fallen off a Christmas tree. <laughs> I think we ought to draw straws, like they did in Lives of a Bengal Lancer. Stupid. Hey, that's an English trick. I'm not having any of that. <laughs> When I was in the Life Boys, we used to take advantage of Mr. Underwood. <laughs> Matthew, don't get sordid. <laughs> Nothing, go on. Well, say Brian Tinglet and I wanted to decide who was going to read the lesson. Well, we'd say that the first person Mr. Underwood spoke to when he came through the door was it. Silly. No, hang on. Hang on, that's not a bad idea. Oh, no, all we need is Mr. Underwood. Now, shut up. Listen, <laughs> say the next person who comes through that door, right? Right, the first one he speaks to complains about the food, right? What if it's Marsh and he shouts at all of us at once? Oh, that's all right. He doesn't qualify as a person anyway. Right. <laughs> hey, shh. <laughs> oh, the wooden horse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, flip. Percy, duty corporal. Yep. By the way, I'll be down with that leg of lamb later on. Oh, thanks very much. Uh, Lionel, I'm sorry about that irk of mine sticking his head in your porridge. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> They've got to eat it, haven't they? <laughs> <laughs> very true, Lionel. <laughs> oh, hello. Here comes the chinless wonder with the Art the Crown voice. <clears throat> Good afternoon, sir. This is a very pleasant surprise. <laughs> Since you're duty corporal and I'm orderly officer, I hardly see anything very surprising about it. Oh, there's that wonderful sense of humour of yours coming out again, sir. <laughs> yes. Let's get on with it, shall we? Yours to command, sir. I know. Can you complain? Can you complain? Can Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How dare you? Well, you did ask, sir. Be quiet! Just because an officer asks you a question, that does not give you the right to reply. <laughs> but it was a question, sir. Yes, I suppose it was. If one becomes rhetorical, I suppose. Well, now look what you've done. You've sent the officer rhetorical. You're paid for that. <laughs> Paul, Paul Marsh. Sorry, sir. Now, let me get this straight. You are actually complaining about the food, are you? <laughs> well, yes, sir. Hear that, sir? Condemning himself out of his own mouth, sir? Do you mind, Corporal? Sorry, sir. Do it your way, sir. I intend to. Now, Emmon, what in particular are you complaining about? Well, all of it, really, sir. Don't split hairs. Tell the officer. <laughs> Very well, then. My cabbage, sir. I don't know what he's talking about, sir. It's green, isn't it, sir? It's green! <laughs> More or less. Still, I'd better taste it, I suppose. Let me tell you this, Ermin. If I find your complaint to be capricious, your feet won't touch. Uh, looks perfectly wholesome to me. <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> I tell 
tell you, Alice, I have not seen such a purge since old Dusty Miller went mad and tried to electrocute a padre. Oh, Lionel. <laughs> not going to do his puffy knees any good, is it? The, the cookhouse was swarming with officers. They had officers up there I didn't even know we had in the camp. <laughs> I mean, they puffed up something oh. awful when his sister met that yank. Three cookhouse inspections a day from now on. They're going to have food tasting by a select committee. Menu's going to be okayed by the group captain himself. They've even barred Lionel's poodle from the cookhouse entirely in case of air risk. But they'll probably puff up so much this time, they'll split right out of his trousers. What will? Lionel's knees. <laughs> probably, yeah. <laughs> Poor old Lionel. Come in. Oh, come in, Lionel. How's your poor knees? <laughs> Puffin, thank you. <laughs> That's your lamb. Now, that is a big man, Alice. I know. No, no, he's not. He is enormous. Even at a time of great personal strife, he still remembers his friends. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? That's the last bit of meat you're ever getting off me. Well, why? Because you dropped me in it, that's why. Wow, well, what have I done? You allowed one of your irks to complain in my cuckoo's. If you were any sort of a D.I., they would be too frightened to breathe, let alone complain. Well, I tried to stop him, Lionel. You heard me. You should have tried harder. So, from now on, you'll just get your meat from the civvy butcher. And pay normal prices. Yes. I should think twice about that if I was you, Lionel. You cancel our little arrangement and I shall shop you about the turkey rustling last Christmas. <laughs> really? Oh. You try. You shot me about them turkeys, and I'll shop you about that scotch that never got to the Corporal's Club. You shot me about the scotch. <laughs> and I'll shop you about making it in your own still. <laughs> you shot me about that still, and I'll shop you about them forged sleeve passes. Oh, it's gloves off now, is it? Well, how would you like to get shopped about that Korean steam bath attendant? <laughs> You shot me about that Korean steam bath attendant. <laughs> and I'll shop you about that fiddle that got you out of going to Korea at all. Oh, calling me a coward now, are you, you puffy knee git? <laughs> <laughs> it's better than having knock knees. I, I have not got knock knees. Oh, yes, you have. Your knees were the laughing stock of the show. Is that headless? But... Well, your <laughs> knock knees are the laughing stock of the old Royal Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are they? Are they? Well, we'll soon see your knees are the funniest. Come on, come on, roll your trousers up. Go Any on. time you like, sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> to blame each other. Well, who do we blame, then? The Irk who complained in the first place. She's right, you know, Percy. Yeah, she is. It was that little swine Lily, wasn't it? Of course it is. Yeah, Here, hang on, Alice. You're usually very sympathetic towards Irks. Not when I have to pay civilian meat prices. <laughs> I was saving up for that cocktail cabin that played the dream of always. <laughs> and to think, Lionel, that a little insect like Lily makes two higher beings like us argue about each other's knees. Well, we all know what happens to insects, don't we? Yeah. They get crushed. Yeah. <laughs> he must definitely be crushed, but I think that we ought to pull his wings off first. <laughs> You know, chaps, I don't think I've been happier since I joined the Royal Air Force. Quite right, too. I mean, that meal this evening actually tasted of food. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's not just that. It's the way the other fellows have been treating me since I complained. I know it sounds silly, but I, I seem to be a sort of hero. <laughs> well, you are, Matthew. You are the Bodiceer of RAF Skelton. <laughs> <laughs> you know, national service isn't such a bad old life, really. Stand by your beds! Good evening, Lily. Evening, Corporal. I wonder if you'd do me a little favour. Gladly. Only, you see, Corporal Jenner's got a bit of fatigues up at the cookhouse. It's just a quarter of an hour for one bloke. I was wondering if you would like to be that bloke. As a matter of fact, Corporal, I'd welcome the opportunity. Would you? Why? Well, it would give me a chance to show Corporal Jenner that there was no personal rancour in my complaint. Oh, that is very Christian of you, Lily. Very Christian. Well, one tries to fight the good fight. Yes, I suppose one does, really. Oh, God. What a <laughs> lamb to the slaughter. <laughs> Good evening, Corporal Jenner. Good evening, Corporal Marsh. I've brought young AC2 Lily for you. Good evening, Corporal Jenner. 
No hard feelings, I trust. None at all. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's all right. Um, what would you like me to do, Corporal? What would I like him to do, Percy? I should tell him if I was you, Lionel. Well, now, you see this meat? Uh, yes, Corporal. Would you mind humping it into the coal store? Not at all. <laughs> Got him? <laughs> it is a wonderful idea, Lionel. But uh, you don't reckon it'll go rotten on us, do you? Of course it won't. <laughs> I've done it before. <laughs> I know my temperatures. Half an hour in there at a few degrees below zero, it won't kill him. <laughs> It's the fear that counts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that part of it, all right. It's sheer Edgar Allen goes under, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> Banging on a two-foot-thick steel door, yeah. eh? <laughs> no one to hear you. Screaming <laughs> your lungs out. In the dark! In the dark! <laughs> Wondering oh. how long it's going to take you to freeze to death. Oh, it's poetic, Lionel. It's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Percy. <laughs> Shall we adjourn for half an hour to the Corporal's Club? <laughs> yes, and I am in a chair. Oh, I'm glad we crunched your way, Lionel. They're not mine. <laughs> They'd have made really nice Nazis, them two. Come. Hello, chaps. What are you doing here? <laughs> well, uh, we may not look like it, but we're the United States Cavalry. <laughs> oh, coming to the rescue, you mean? <clears throat> you know, I thought that door didn't slide too by itself. I get it now. Corporal Marsh and Corporal Jenner asked me up here to play a prank on me. Prank? You called it a prank? Blimey, Matthew, if you'd have ended up as one of Sweeney Todd's pies, you'd have reckoned it was a merry jape. You'd have come out as there like an ace lolly and legs. Yeah. Oh, come on, it's all a part of rough service humour, isn't it? No, it isn't. Listen, we heard the plan, Matthew, and there's no humour in it at all. Right. Then we're going to leave you in there for half an hour. Were they? Well, the blooming flippers! That's right, sir. <laughs> it's about time you lost your rag. Well, I have. Of all the flipping fli... No, I must stop that. <laughs> Using foul language only brings me down to their level. Oh, come on. You need a diving belt to get down to their level. <laughs> Wait a minute, though. We're going to have the last laugh when they get back here and find I've gone. Is that your idea of revenge? Well, yes. Nah. I reckon when they get back, they should find you in there. What do you mean? Well... They're such nice blokes, aren't they? I'd hate them to be disappointed. <laughs> Here we are back in the old ice cream factory. Yeah, yeah, well, that's a good round half hour, I think. <laughs> Shall we see how our little raspberry ripples get in on? Yes, yeah. <laughs> you think he's just gone plain mad with fear or totally insane? <laughs> you bloody fool. Hey, look at that gauge. You've turned it down. He's been in there at the minus 40. Well, I haven't touched it. You're the one who's had temperature gauges for, for breakfast. You did it. Oh, no, no, no. I'm too subtle. Subtle? <laughs> You've just frozen an earth to death in there. I'll shop you to the SPs. I'll shop you to the CO. Yeah, and I'll shop you to the Air Ministry. I'll shop you to the House of Lords. Don't worry me, son. I'll shop you to the Queen. I'll shop you to... Shut up! <laughs> We've got to get him out of there. Maybe we can hide the body somewhere. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Do that! I've had the meat up. <laughs> it's hard for national service has to get some in. Don't tell me now if you are so glad to get some in. So leave your mom in laughing off the show where you can win. Your big tip off your bones will start to get some in. So you're in the R.A.X. You'll never see a plane. It's all the hot and full, it's all the hot and full, the again. It's drill and sweat and fizz and try to come to it, your head. You'll be the lowest form of life, you'll wish that you were dead. The rap for two years of your life now is a sad to sing. There's only one way to get out, and that's to get some in. Get some in. It's time for national service.
that's to get some in. They'll tell you now if you ask your dad's to get some in. So leave your mummy's loving arms, there's no way you can win. The victim of your vocal charm, so get some in. The rat's got two years of your life, now isn't that a sin? There's only one way to get out, and that's to get some in. Yeah, I wonder who's. Ah, <laughs> oh, shut up. I'm going to have my breakfast, don't I? Hey, just a minute. There's someone's finger in there. Oh, my <laughs> God. How many times have I told you, Escoffier? Tie your finger stall on securely. <laughs> <laughs> you are kidding. Uh, no, I think I'll leave the porridge this morning. Thank you. It's not the egg, right? And it's not the bacon. No way. It must be the liver. liver. <laughs> <laughs> Oi! <laughs> Come on, I'm not a budgie, am I? <laughs> you again, is it? Well, look at it, Corporal. Looks as if someone's dropped a button onto me plate. <laughs> if you want to complain, Herman, you complain to the uh, the officer. Yeah, I might do that. Yeah, you do that. And just remember that the last hurt that complained was never seen again. We exported him to the Wogs in Bahrain. <laughs> <laughs> In tins! <laughs> um, I'll have the right-angled triangle, please. Yeah. <laughs> Dear, my yolk's runny. Good lucky I haven't even got a yolk. <laughs> oh, what do they put in the tea here? Bromide. What's bromide, Bruce? It's to stop you feeling randy. <laughs> <laughs>